Hi, great to have you with us today. We're considering the life of Jonah over these next couple of weeks. So thanks for joining us. A quick review. Jonah decided he knew better than God. He jumped on a boat heading in the opposite direction. A massive storm nearly destroys the ship and Jonah is thrown overboard because it's his fault and is swallowed up by a huge fish. He doesn't die and is inside the fish three days and three nights. So this is where we pick up the story today. It's Jonah chapter 2. Let's read it together. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From the deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. You held me into the depths, into the very heart of the sea, and the current swelled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I've been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed wrapped around my head. The roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit when my life was ebbing away. I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from our Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah, onto dry ground. This is a snapshot of what Jonah would have prayed. He's in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. There would have been many other prayers, I'm sure, like, Help! God, can you hear me? God, can you save me? Get me out of here! I'm sorry! Jonah said, In my distress, I called on the Lord. Think about that. In his distress, he called on the Lord and the Lord answered him. Can you grasp that for a moment? Can we just grasp what that means for us? That we have the ability to call on God, the God of the universe, the creator, the sustainer, the one who spoke and hung the stars in the sky, who created the heavens and the earth and all the galaxies, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Holy One. We can call on the Lord. You and I can call on him and he will answer. Jonah called on him after basically saying, Well, God, forget you. I'll do what I like. But God, in his mercy, answered him. Don't let that pass us by today. We can call on God and he will answer. When I had no place to turn, I called on God. And he answered me from the deepest, darkest place, the place of death. When I needed him the most and I deserved it the least, he was there for me. If God was there for Jonah, friend, he'll be there for you. Helpless and powerless, God is still there for you. Verse 5 says, The engulfing waters threaten me. 
the deep surrounding me, seaweed weed wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down, the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up, up from the pit. Yes. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to your holy temple. Basically, Jonah's saying, hey, I'm a dead man. I'm a goner. But no, God was there for me and God provided. When he felt his life was ebbing away, he remembered the Lord and the Lord remembered him. Jonah declared a prophetic truth. And that's what he does right now. And you and I can hear the seriousness in his tone, the desperation, the anguish, the loss. From that darkest point, he's warning those, those readers of his day and time, and he's warning us today. Listen, whatever you do, don't do what I did. Whatever you do, don't run from God. Whatever you do, don't neglect him. Don't disobey him. Verse 8 says, those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Here's a joke for you. A man walks into a seafood store carrying a large trout under his arm. Do you make fish cakes, he asks. Yes, we do, replied the fishmonger. Great, he said. It's his birthday. Two fish were in a tank. One says to the other, do you know how to drive this thing? Remember this. As we consider Jonah's words and prayer in these closing, closing verses. Friends, remember Jonah is inside a fish and there's nothing that he could do to contribute to his own salvation. He couldn't go and sacrifice an innocent animal. He couldn't give money at the temple. He couldn't do good works. He couldn't go help the poor. He's stuck in a fish. He couldn't do any kind of physical thing to contribute to get himself out of this situation. He could do nothing. Jonah says, what I vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will make it right. I will follow through. In verse 10, And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah out onto dry land. Yes, salvation, friends. It's not from you. It's not from your works. It's not from doing good things or not doing bad things. Because Ephesians 2.8 reminds us, For it is by grace you've been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Receive that gift. The gift of salvation. The gift of God's grace. The gift of forgiveness. Receive that gift. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10, and the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. That's disgusting. It just is. Ugh, yuck. Here comes Mr. Stinky Fish Vomit Man, ready to preach the word of the Lord. Now this fish has been traveling in the right direction, guided by the Lord to get our mate Jonah Mr. No, thank you, God, I don't want to go and speak to these people into the right place, right where he needed to be. 
God will use whatever he can to get you where you need to be. The Lord will use anything and everything to get you where you need to be. So you can hear from him, follow him, speak for him, serve him. Here comes Jonah. God bless. More next week.